In the third video of this chapter, we are going to do some similar fixes, uh, like we did in the second one. But instead of using Substance Alchemist, this time we are going to use another tool from the Substance ecosystem. We are going to use Substance Painter. You will see that we will come to the same result, but we will use some different techniques. So let's start and switch to Painter. Go to File, Open Sample, and just open the Tiling Material Sample file. You'll be presented with a plain mesh whose UV is tiled the texture two times both vertically and horizontally. Make sure to save the project to a new location under a new name so we can work with it. Now we need to clean it up a little bit. We don't need any of the layers which are included since we're going to import our own textures, so delete all the layers. In next step, import the textures that we baked in Substance Designer. If you remember, we did that in video 1 of this chapter. Select the height, normal and base color textures and drag and drop them over the shelf in Painter. For the import settings, select them all as type texture for the import and import them all into the project itself. So, let's start building the layer stack. First, create a fill layer and populate it with these imported textures. Every texture into its own corresponding channel. As you can see, the material is now visible in the viewport. Set the roughness to full white for now, we'll work on it a little bit later. Displacement scale is too big, so go to the shader settings and reduce the scale of the displacement to something more like real world. 0.03 looks like it's doing the job just fine. Looking at the material, we can see that horizontal tiling of the material, since we baked from a cylinder, is completely fine, there is no need to fix that one, but there is a lot of visible seams in the vertical tiling. So, how do we fix that in Substance Painter? Actually, quite easy. First of all, come here to the shelf and search for the Transform filter. Take it and drop it on top of the layer stack. Offset it 0.5 in the Y axis and that will move the seam to the middle of the texture. Stitch to a 2D view and you can see where the seam has moved. Next, we are going to use basically the same approach we did in the Alchemist, by cloning certain parts of the texture. Actual process is slightly different in Painter, as we are going to use one regular paint layer rather than several clone patch filters. Create a simple paint layer and call it Seam Fixed, so we know what's going on. One thing that we need to set up before cloning is to go through every channel that we have and switch the layer blending mode to pass through, so we can keep the layer stack non-destructive. Now we are all set up for using the clone tool. The clone tool works like this. If you hold the letter V on the keyboard and left click the mouse anywhere, that is where it will source the clone. Then you paint somewhere else and clone from the selected source. Zoom in a little bit on the seam, adjust the brush size and we can start cloning out the problematic areas. Good approach is to source the clone locally, so height difference is not big. And use the smaller brush so we can really go into the crevices and details to match the pattern. Zoom in, paint an area, but then zoom out to check how everything looks. Make sure you don't have any kind of sudden height differences, because those will cause problems. Let's spend some time to paint out this seam nicely, because we are in no rush. Once you are happy with how the fixed seam looks like, we can move on and do very similar adjustments like we did in previous videos. If you remember, I like using my slow blur to sharpen out the height details. Luckily, slow blur comes already integrated with Substance Painter, so there is no need to recreate it. Come down to the shelf and search for it, the slow blur in there. When you find it, drop it to the top of the layer stack. Make sure that new layer is only enabled for the height channel, as that is where we want our effect to happen. Hold Alt on your keyboard and click on the height channel load and filter so it's only affecting that. To set it up, put the source type to be previous input, which is the input coming from the layer stack. Set the blend mode to minimum, like we did before, and switch the view to the height channel, to see how it looks. Now we can tweak the intensity until we get something that we like. 0.3 looks ok. Let's fix the base color next. Search for the color correct filter in the shelf, and drag and drop it to the top of the layer stack. We want to reduce this dark patch here, so under the shadows parameters increase the luminosity to something like 0.16 and complement it with a touch of contrast. 
still on the base color, let's sharpen it up as well. Back to the shelf, search for sharpen and add it, same as before. Make sure that we are sharpening only the color channel by holding Alt on your keyboard and clicking on the color channel toggle for the layer. Set the sharpen to 0.2 because that is more than enough. Last thing that we need to do to finalize this material is to create the two missing channels, roughness and ambient occlusion. We also need to add the ambient occlusion channel to the project itself. Come here to the channels where you can see there is no AO channel. Click and add one. Go to the shelf and search for the HBAO filter, dropping it yet again to the top of the layer stack. Switch to the AO channel to see what we are working on. Make sure that the channel source is height, but reduce the height depth to 0.01, but increase the radius all the way. Finally, let's make the missing roughness channel. We are going to do that by referencing the information that you already have here in the layer stack. Specifically, we are going to reference base color and height channels by using anchor points. Create a regular paint layer and again set the blend mode for all the channels on that layer to pass through. Then right click on the layer and create an anchor point on it. Give it some sensible name and switch to viewing the roughness channel. Create one more paint layer, then right click and add the fill effect to it. Enable the fill only for the roughness channel and fill it with the anchor point we just created. Set the reference channel on that anchor point to be height, open the levels parameters, invert first and then tweak the values to get a nice base roughness. For the final step, right click on the layer again, but this time add the generator. Make sure one more time that the generator is only affecting the roughness channel and pick the grayscale conversion generator from the mini shelf. Reference the same anchor point inside it, in the image inputs, but leave base color this time as the reference channel. Enable the invert option in the generator and switch to the roughness layer stack and set the generator's blend mode to overlay. Around 60 to 70% should do the trick. Now we can go back to the material view and see what we have made. Also, check all the other channels just to make sure that everything is fine. Now is the time to save the project and export the textures. Default export settings are great, so just make sure that you set the size export to 4K. And we are done basically. So to recap, we imported the baked textures from Substance Designer into Substance Painter. Then we used the tiling material sample project to easily see and fix the seams using the clone tool. We polished the material by adjusting colors, sharpening and creating the missing channels like roughness and ambient occlusion. See you in the next video, where we will go through the process of creating the photogrammetry scan. Bye.